grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Peter and Paul talked about that. That we allow Christ fuller reign of my life. I like to think of this as salvation. God, you have God. You have Christ. But in a more sanctifying experience, the Lord has you. See what I'm trying to say? A, a, a full surrender type of thing. Philippians 2.8 tells us, Humble yourselves and become obedient to the point of death. Even, and humble himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the cross. That refers to Jesus Christ coming to earth, stepping down from glory, and doing the ultimate total surrender. Remember in the garden, when he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, and it was heavy in his heart. And you almost sensed in the, remember, he was fully God and fully human. The fully human said, I don't really want to go to Calvary. Who would want to? But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm going to give you a thought this morning that you can take with you this week. And ask yourself, have you arrived at the place where you can say truly, sincerely, not my will, but thy will be done? In the last month, I've gone through a time of great testing. And to be honest with you, I'm glad I'm in this church right now because I really need to be a part of this church. I need to be a part of a congregation, not a church shop. And I say that because I had it all figured out. And then when things got complicated, we had to go to a different mortgage company. It got me to the point, I think my wife can say this too. Last week, I just found that when I finally said to the place, I'm going to go somewhere else and have to get well. And I learned something. And I said, you know what? It's only a house. If I'm meant to buy it, Lord, so be it. If not, then okay. And I think my wife and her wisdom had arrived at that decision before I did. Because that's what she kept saying to me too. What does the Lord want us to do? And that's what you need to be searching for in your journey. What does the Lord want you to do? Sin revolve in your life? There can be those constant forces. And lastly, third, the promise. There is a promise. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is a conditional promise. God doesn't bargain with us, but we have to do something. Christianity is not a free ride. Well, no, I'm a Christian. Everything will fall into place. Wouldn't that be nice? See, I'm a Christian. No, my life will be easy. In fact, I'd have to say sometimes, and maybe you can identify with this, I have found that sometimes when I became a Christian, it, it was, it's difficult. It's hard to serve the Lord. It's not easy. But it says here, then, when you meet the conditions, when you really humble yourself, and you pray, and you seek God's face, and you turn away from worldly things, then you know what? Those obstacles will no longer be there. Many times you miss a blessing because your pride, your will gets in the way. It's the old thing, we have met the enemy, and they are us. You know what I'm going to tell you today, what the biggest obstacle I have found in Christian faith? Myself and my stupid pride. In having to get the last word in. But you know something? We've got to let go and let go. And that's what we have to do. The great evangelist D.L. Moody said in 2 Chronicles 7.14, it brings heaven within speaking distance. And Dr. Alan Redpath said that God's mercy with a sinner is only equal and perhaps outmatched by his patience with you and me. If God has one great quality, it is patience with the human race. Can you imagine what God puts up with? On a 24-hour pe period, people use his name in vain. So how would you like your name to be used in vain every day? Every time a curse word, your name is hooked to it. Would you like that? And this is God. We ought to tremble in fear that we are putting the Almighty down. God's patience. Think for a moment when Christ died on the cross. Picture the scene. There he is on the cross. Are they shedding tears? Save yourself and your God. They mocked him. 
humiliated him. There's a song that says he could have sent 10,000 angels. You know, at a certain point, when he hung on that cross, and they mocked and humiliated him, 